Act 2-1, Tick Tick Boom. We're being introduced to our first boomer, I've gone on the left path and I'm going to throw all my grenades because I've got a nice tasty refill. And once you pick up the boom shot, which is exactly what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using the boom shot as a, an emergence hole sealer. Because on insane, the boom shot really suffers. It's a fantastic weapon, but the HP thresholds are so high on this difficulty that it really makes it seem like a shitty weapon when it's not. The boom shot's utility comes from its ability to get rid of grubs. In the multiplayer, the boom shot's a thing of beauty. And in the hard mode, the boom shot is, is really, really nice in the later games because it seems to, to perform a lot better. But on Insane, on the first game, you can shoot at a boomer with this weapon and he'll take three booms. Three booms is one boom less than like what you pick up when you get this weapon, so it's really unacceptable. And also, it's like a mortar from Worms, if you ever played that game. When you fire the boom shot, it releases a cluster of bombs. And depending on the detection of those bombs, depends on how much damage it does. So right then, that was a bad shot by me and a bad cluster, and it didn't even kill a standard grub. So it makes the boom shot look crappy, doesn't it? But you know when you hit people, you guarantee that all the clusters hit them, and that's when it does its most damage. So if you're ever wondering why the boom shot seems intermittent, it's because it has variables to it. Also, folks, this is the first part of the game where you can get a sniper rifle. However, it's very luck based because do you see the guy up in the building shooting at me with one? If you boom shot him and the boom hits the wall behind him and he explodes and it throws his rifle towards us, you can pick up his sniper. It's really tough to do though and you can do it in the room coming up as well. That's the chainsaw from Gears of War 1. It is so powerful. It's crazy powerful. This is a tough fight as well. The reason this fight is tough is because you cannot control the spawns and there's a lot of dudes. So be very... Like right now I thought I was dead. I did not think I'd survive this, and I got very lucky that Carmine, uh, oh sorry, Baird chainsawed that drone. And there's a few moments in this walkthrough where things like that happen, where I commit to being dead and think it's a reset, and I don't die. And it's it's luck. It's 100% luck, but sometimes you need it. Be very careful rushing this turret guy, because there's a couple of locusts in his room, and they're really quiet. So this guy on the doorway, I'm going to try and clip him around the door with the boom, because I've got quite a lot of boom shots, and I know what I'm going to use this for, so I'm not afraid to use it. I'm trying to bait him to come. Do you see his shadow through the wall? That tells you he's on the other side of the wall. There's a bad reload. Take a shot every time I do a bad reload. You'll probably get quite drunk. Usually, I'm okay at active reloads. However, I have this nature of pressing reload when I stop firing. And if the gun's already started doing the reload, I fuck it up. So if you ever see an active where I press the active nowhere near the active bar, it's because I went to reload and the gun was already in the animation of reloading. It happens all the time and I don't know why I do it. It's just one of those weird things. But this guy right here is using collision against me. He has an ultimate spot and I can't hit him. So we're in a bit of a firefight and I'm losing this firefight. So I'm going to push over here but be very careful on this doorway. These two doorways here are the most dangerous in this area because you never know if there's just a grunt sat next to it and he just insta-kills you. But once you're here, this guy should go down pretty quickly. And there's the toll telling us that the war is over and we won. Thank you for watching. You take care now.